to listen to me this evening. Actually, this is pretty rare for me. I don't do many political hustings, but uh, I've had my arm twisted. And uh, uh, because I'm the guy that runs the business of the Conservative Party, I run the party machine, I raise the money, I work out how to spend it. I <coughs> am responsible for running the campaign. And, um, uh, and they don't let me out much. But it's only, actually, uh, I would say probably uh, one of my main uh, sources of, uh, of fun, if you like, and enjoyment is going to events organised uh, by the British Indian community and the Gujarati community in particular. And I have many friends in that community, and I'm always happy to be out and meeting people and seeing them and hearing what they've got to say. I have to say, uh, 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 CJ Rabero painted a picture of the Gujarati community which is rather depressing, and it's not really the one that I recognise. Um, I go out, I went to school, uh, as he said, in North London. About a third of my uh, school was of Indian origin, uh, and actually they were all brilliant, and they were incredibly successful, and their parents have been successful. And um, so at the school I sort of saw this dynamic and vibrant and incredibly successful community. I then went into business and actually there was even more uh, brilliant and successful uh, good people of Gujarati origin that I met. Uh, and then I went into politics and there were sort of more again. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I would say that the Conservative Party has been maybe a bit slow historically in recognising the brilliance of this community. But one of my jobs, first as Chief Executive and then as Chairman, is to point out to my colleagues uh, and to the Prime Minister or the Leader of the Opposition, as he then was, that this was a huge pool of talent and we should be, we should be fishing in it more, uh, more enthusiastically because there were so many brilliant people that I'd grown up with who were sort of doing amazingly in the professions, brilliantly in business. Some of them were beginning to rise through the political uh, 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 sphere and we should be grabbing this community and engaging with it and, and drawing it close. And I agree with Eric's comments, which is that... Uh, you know, actually the Gujarati community should just reflect the wider British community. The balance between its interests should be no different from, uh, from, from, the, from, from, the, from, from the rest of the British community. But the Conservative Party has traditionally not done particularly well, hasn't really taken the trouble to understand uh, the difference between, let's say, the Gujarati and the Punjabi community, between uh, 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 you know, other uh, minority groups, and we've been pretty unsophisticated in our approach. And one of my missions in life has been to help us to be a bit more sophisticated. Eric is, uh, amongst my college, colleagues who really gets it, always has got it, he grew up in a part of the country where he was used to this diversity. But you know, if you were uh, a conservative politician who built their career in, in, in the southeast of Eng in the southeast of England or in the Shires, you may well not have had an understanding of the brilliant uh, diversity of this country, and that's uh, an important thing for us to accept and move on. Um, what I would say is that the Jewish community had a similar journey. Uh, before 1979, when Margaret Thatcher became leader, my own community voted pretty solidly Labour, uh, because they arrived in all of them in the East End, they didn't have very much money, they kind of worked, uh, you know, doing very modest jobs, a lot of them were in the garment business, which unfortunately are my family still in that business, but uh, they, uh, they, you know, they, uh, 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 you know, it was pretty tough life, and it was only as they uh, moved on in their life and became more successful and more established and more confident that they even looked towards the Conservative Party. And Dola Popat said to me when I first became involved, he said, you know, there isn't much of an argument about values with the Gujarati community, he said, because they basically get it. They care about their family. They care about building a business. They care about giving something back to their community. They're basically conservative in their instinct. But you guys, you've got to smile more. So, uh, and I think, you know, it's a bit simplistic, but actually talking and engaging and understanding the needs of the community is actually something that we haven't done as well as we might. And as we face this general election, which I think is really a critical election, and Mary pointed out some of the differences between the parties, and there are indeed some differences. I would say to you that the reason that the Conservative Party is a natural home for the Gujarati community in the end is because it is, at its heart, at its core, a party of aspiration. It is about people making their way in the world, doing the best that they can be, being the best that they can be, and feeling that they have a route to achieve that. And that starts, you know, with, their edu with education, and I think that the uh, academy school program, half of all secondary schools in the country are now academies, has started to transform educational standards, 
created a more competitive dynamic between the, uh, within, within the state sector and has actually uh, uh, fostered excellence. And I, I see a lot of schools, some of these academy schools, particularly in South East London, where they've gone from achieving sort of 23% grade A to uh, the passes uh, for five good GCSC passes, the sort of 85, 90% result, particularly, as I say, the Harris Academies, which I'm very familiar with. But that is, that, that sort of ra raising of educational standards is absolutely central to the, the journey, to, of, of, of the aspirational journey which everyone should be go, to be able to go on. I mean, I was lucky enough to go to a private school because my dad worked sort of 70 hours a week. Uh, uh, my grandparents came from East End and they slept eight in one bedroom. You know, my grandmother was one of eight children, but my father worked hard and built a business and sent me to private school. Private school doesn't have to be the only option, though for fulfilling your potential. I think all children should have the possibility of a great uh, education. Then as you move on, you want to have an opportunity of finding an after education, either going to university or perhaps doing an apprenticeship. And we have really placed an enormous emphasis on opening up those options once you've finished uh, your education. And then the next big step on the ladder is getting your first job. And under this government, uh, we would say that businesses have created a thousand new jobs a day. And actually, it's a staggering figure, 1.85 million jobs have been created in the private sector. Now, some jobs were lost in the public sector at the beginning because there was a feeling of a need to sort of bring a, a, the, the deficit under control. But actually, uh, you know, we've created nearly four times as many jobs, or businesses have created nearly four times as many jobs in the private sector. And that's been a, an important step. And once you've got a job, then you want to try and own a home. And so this government, I think, has had a very strong series of messages around uh, help to buy, about helping to get people on the housing ladder. Help to buy is a particular favourite policy of mine because a lot of people who were working, even couples who were working, both only a good wage, at the end couldn't get enough money together. They could pay the mortgage payments, but they couldn't get a deposit together. And help to buy has been actually helping those people to get that deposit and get and get started. And then, I think 88,000 uh, homes have been bought under the help to buy scheme. So getting a home is the next thing. And then once you've got a home and you want to have children, you then want to think about, uh, you know, I suppose, uh, sometime after that, you start to think about your retirement and what you might be able to do in your retirement. And I think the liberalisation of the, of the of, of pension system, of actually increasing uh, the increase, increases in the state pension, and then leading to also uh, liberalisation of those people who save for retirement, liberalisation of the pension system, uh, with people being able to not being forced into uh, buying annuities and having that flexibility. Because if people are sensible enough to save money for retirement, they should have the flexibility they want with at the end. And so I think that there is a narrative here, cradle to grave, which is focused on aspiration. And I think that this party, that is why I think there is a natural uh, connection between the Gujarati community and the Conservative Party. We don't always communicate it as well as we could. We don't always talk enough. We don't always smile enough. But actually, the narrative, the central core of what we believe is thoroughly aligned with what people in this room care about, what I care about, what I grew up with. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think that, uh, uh, you know, over time, and if we work hard, uh, we may eventually persuade increasing numbers of the community to believe that and also to participate in the political process. And we, you know, we're proud of our, of our, uh, of our MPs, of the origin. We'd like to have more. We had a, and, and this is... I suppose my last remark, and the thing that makes me most proud of being conservative, is that in the safest seat of the country was, was occupied by one William Hague in Richmond in Yorkshire, and uh, they just selected uh, uh, an Indian origin candidate to represent the conservatives in the safest seat in the country. And I think that that shows that we're changing, that we're understanding it. It's quite an important moment that, because he didn't get he didn't get selected on the basis of the Indian community in Richmond in Yorkshire. I can tell you, he got. He got selected purely on the basis of his outstanding talent, his oratory, his fantastic background in business. And uh, that kind of makes me proud because that is the way that we should encourage uh, this community to feel more connected with the Conservative Party. Anyway, thank you for having me today. As I say, I don't do hustings very often, but I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you.